What's up, what's up everyone? Ayan, muli tayo nagbabalik dito sa YouTube at ako ay mag-upload, no? Uh, tayo ay magkakaroon ulit ng munting discussion about a brand new topic. And I'm sure you are here because you're looking for this material. No. <laughs> okay, don't worry guys. I am happy that you're here and I hope that you will learn a lot from my discussion about my insights, about my input about the Cavite Mutiny or ang pag-aalsa sa Cavite. No, nakikita nyo sa inyong screen, it's a one past but many histories. Okay, bakit kaya? Um, primarily ito guys kasi may dalawang mukha. No? May dalawang mukha ang Cavite Mutiny. Okay, aba, Malacara i Cruz. Okay, so kung ano yung mukha ng Cavite Mutiny at ano ang kahalagahan nito sa ating uh, kasaysayan, ito ay inyong malalaman ngayong araw na ito. Are you ready? Ayan. Say you are ready. Yes. Just chill out there, sit back and relax. <coughs> Now, um and let me discuss this for you. All right. Now, um <coughs> Ever since tayo elementary no or high school uh, alam natin yung mga very important dates ng ating kasaysayan no 1898 1896 1996 we know what happened during those period of time okay but guys no we have to remember that as equally historic and significant sa ating kasaysayan ng bansa natin is the year 1872 Okay, napaka-importante nito dahil um, walang 1896 revolution kung walang 1872 Cavite Mutiny. Na? Tandaan nyo yan guys dahil mamaya pagtatagpiin natin ang mga events, mga pangyayari no? kung bakit naging contributory ang Cavite Mutiny sa Philippine Revolution. Now, dalawang major events ang nangyari noong 1872. Okay, paano ba sabihin to in Spanish? 1872. Um, 1872. Oh, di ba? Oh, you you kind of learn Spanish from me, ha? <laughs> okay. Now, unang-una na ng major event dyan ay ang 1872 Cavite Mutiny. Okay? At pangalawa na dyan ay ang, ito na nga, no? Noong nasentensyahan ng pagkamatay ang ating tatlong martyr na pari. No? In the persons of fathers Mariano Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora. Okay, take note ha, they are Gombursa fathers, hindi sila Gombursa brothers, okay? Baka iba ang masagot ninyo sa recitation kay ma'am, kay sir. Again, remember, Gombursa fathers. All right. Now, <clears throat> di ba sinabi ko kanina na may dalawang mukha ang Cavite Mutiny? No? So, dal- ito na lang naman yun eh. No? So, we have the Filipino version and then the Spanish version. Okay, parang representative lang sa Miss Universe, no? So, Filipino version, yun ang uunahin natin, okay? Ano ba ang version ng Pilipino na nangyari sa Cavite Mutiny ng 1872, no? Before we go on to that, no, it's important that we define what a mutiny is. So, a mutiny, it's a form of rebellion against authority, okay? Rebellion, pag-alsa kontra sa mga namumuno. It comes from an old verb mutin, which means revolt. Okay, so kung inyong matatandaan, no, ang pinaka uh, latest or recent na mutiny dito sa ating bansa ay noong 2000 and uh, uh, kailan ba yun? 2001, 2003. Ah, uh, yung kay uh, yung um, uh, sa Oakwood mutiny. Okay, na pinangunahan ni dating Senator uh, Antonio Trillanes IV. Okay, dahil sila ay uh, nag-aalsa kontra sa administrasyon ni Pangulong Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. So, uh, eventually, hindi siya naging successful. Okay? But then, going back. So, going back to the Filipino version, ito ay isinulat at inilahad ni Dr. Trinidad Hermine Hildo Pardo de Tavera, isang Filipino scholar and isang Filipino researcher. Now, what is the Filipino version all about? Okay, according to Dr. Uh, Pardo de Tavera, no, ang Cavite mutiny ay isa lamang, no, it's a merely a mutiny by Filipino soldiers and laborers of the Cavite Arsenal. 
Okay? So, nag-alsa ang mga Pilipinong sundalo at mga manggagawa sa arsenal sa Cavite. Guys, no, pag sinabi natin arsenal, um, ito yung pagawaan or imbakan ng mga armas. Okay? Armas nino ng Spanish government. Okay? So, sila ang nagbabantay. Sila ang nagpoprotekta noon. Ngayon, um, na dissatisfied sila no from the draconian policies of Izquierdo sino naman itong Mr. Izquierdo na ito si Izquierdo ay ang um, ito ang governor general ng, Pil- ng Pilipinas back in the days during that time so kung matatandaan niyo no uh, dahil tayo ay under Spain wala tayong presidente so kumbaga si governor general Izquierdo na bagong dating sa Pilipinas siya naman ang mamumuno okay? siya ang magmamanage ng ating ng Pilipinas okay? nung dumating siya meron siya mga inintroduce na mga polisiya, mga programa okay? at ito na nga yun yung abolisyon ng pribilehyo na ine-enjoy ng mga Filipino soldiers at mga manggagawa sa arsenal okay? ano ba yung pribilehyo na yun? unang una Okay, take note, isulat mo na yan sa notepad mo, no? Ang unang pribilehyo ay exempted ang mga sundalo at mga manggagawang Pilipino sa arsenal lang, ha? Sa pagbabayad ng tribute or it's, it's a form of tax. Okay, so isipin mo na lang na ngayon, uh, just try to imagine na ikaw ay exempted sa pagbabayad ng tax. So that's a privilege. Okay. Then another privilege is they're also exempted from forced labor or yung tinatawag nating polo y servicio. Okay, ano bang ibig sabihin noon? Um, sa isang pamilya no, sa isang pamilya kung uh, ang isang uh, uh, legal na edad na lalaki uh, ay forced na pagtatrabahuhin. Okay, whether he likes it or not. So gano- that's how it works. Okay? So yun yung inabolish ni Izquierdo. Uh, kasama na rin on top yung prohibition of the founding of the School of Arts and Trades. So, syempre kung ikaw ay, ay may privilege napakaganda na hindi ka nagbabaya ng buwis at the same time ay ikaw din ay exempted sa uh, forced labor tas bigla yung inalis sa iyo. So, syempre ikaw ay magrereklamo. Ikaw ay mag-aalsa. Magko-complain. Okay? So, ano nangyari? Ah, uh, Ngayon, sinimulan ang uprising ng military personnel ng Fort San Felipe. No, ito yung pangalan ng arsenal sa Cavite. On this day, January 20, 1872. Okay, take note of the date. Isulat mo na agulit sa notepad mo. So, around 200 soldiers and laborers rose up in the belief na pwede siyang mag-elevate, pwede siyang lumaki as a national uprising. Pero, pero, pero... Okay, so balit ngunit tatapwat, itong mutiny na to ay nako, ayan, medyo naging unsuccessful siya. Okay, and government soldiers executed many of the participants. So, later on, malalaman nyo kung bakit siya naging unsuccessful. Okay, now, ayan na. So, dito na pumasok ang ating Gumburza Fathers. So, so this, is, this is the collective name of the three martyred priests. So, syempre, di ba sa isang pag-alsa? may tinuturong mastermind. Okay? So, dito sila, nadamay. Again, na take note of the word nadamay. Okay? They were tagged as the masterminds of the Cavite Mutiny. Okay? So, just imagine, no? Itong tatlong pari na to ay nananahimik sa kanilang kumbento, simbahan, they're doing uh, very religious activities. Just all of a sudden, ay madadamay sila sa Cavite Mutiny. So, Let's try to connect. Back it. Okay? They were prominent Filipino priests charged with treason and sedition. So, ayan ang kaso na uh, ibinangga sa tatlong pare, no? So, bakit kaya? Now, noong panahon na yun, meron tayong tinatawag na secularization. Okay? In English... Yan, very good. Secularization. Okay? So, kung ito ay isang um, movement, no? Is itong movement na kung saan ay uh, ninanais na mga lokal na kaparihan or native clergies. Pag sinabi natin native clergies, mga paring Pilipino na magkaroon ng kanilang simbahan. 
Okay? At nung magkaroon sila ng magkaroon, magkaroon sila ng magandang posisyon at magandang uh, authority sa simbahan. No? Tandaan nyo, nung dati, noong panahon ng mga Espanyol, ay kontrolado ng mga Spanish friars ang mga simbahang katoliko sa ating, no, sa ating lugar. Okay? So, yun yung tinatawag nating sekularisasyon. At ito ay, ay uh, isinusulong ng pa, nila pa, ng nila Padre Gomez, nila Padre Burgos at nila Padre Zamora. Medyo active sila sa secularization movement. Kaya sila idinawit, no? Kaya sila idinawit ng ng uh, Spanish government na sila ang mastermind ng Cavite Mutiny. So ayun na nga, they were sentenced, they were put into trial at sila ay ginarote in public. So this is just a Uh, um, uh, uh, a, a demonstration no? ng pag, paano ginagarote ang isang tao it's killing someone by strangulation typically with an iron wire or cord so hanggang ino, hindi, hindi pinuputo ng ulo okay? hindi pugot so ano lang yan para hindi ka na makahinga yan so ayan na nga no? February 17, 1872 okay uh, a little uh, Uh, less than one month after the Cavite mutiny, the Gumburza were executed by Garote in public to serve as a threat to Filipinos never to attempt to fight the Spaniards again. No? This is the Spaniards sending a huge message to us na huwag nyo kaming kalabanin or else ito ang mangyayari sa inyo. Now, take note guys, no? this is a scene purportedly witnessed by a young Jose Rizal. Okay, ito daw ay nasaksihan ng isang batang Jose Rizal. O ayan na, ayan, medyo napagpatagpitagpin na natin okay, ang mga pangyayari. Alright. Now, syempre kung may Filipino version, ano, diba, may, may Spanish version naman. Okay. Ano, ano naman kaya itong Spanish version na ito? Ito naman ay isinulat no, ni Jose Montero y Vidal. So, isa siyang prolific Spanish historian and documented the event now according to the spanish version take note na they highlighted the mutiny as an attempt of the indios to overthrow the spanish government in the philippines mm. so uh, inisip nila na ayun na nang lalaban ng mga indio patatalsikin na nila tayo we have to do something okay and at the same time Ito, ito rin ay medyo na, na, na magnify ni Governor General Izquierdo sa kanyang report sa hari ng Espanya to, and made use of it to implicate the native clergy okay uh, which was then active in the call for secularization so again, you know, nilagyan ko pa nga dyan ng uh, medyo magandang definition no? ang secularization para mas madali nating maunawaan Okay, so according to the Spanish version din, no, ang 1872 Cavite Mutiny was premeditated. So, ibig sabihin ng premeditated, pinagplanuhang mabuti. Okay, it's a part of a big conspiracy among educated leaders, mestizos, the lawyers, and residents of Manila and Cavite. They allegedly, huh? favorite ito ni Jessica Soho, ano? di umano, oh, di umano pinlano nila to liquidate high-ranking Spanish officers and then kill the friars. Okay? So, naunawaan natin, no? Ito yung Spanish version. Aha, so, <clears throat> ngayon, on January 20, 1872, okay, noong pangyayaring yon, apparently, at the same time naman, no, ay nagdiriwang ng kapistahan ng Birheng Loreto sa distrito ng Sampaloc. Okay? So, Sampaloc, Manila yan. So, syempre, came with it were some fireworks display. Okay? So, just try to imagine ano kayang itsura ng fireworks display, no? no? 1872. Ngayon, syempre, wala na mo mga matataas na building noon. Bahay-bahay lang tayo noon. O, ang, kung ano yung mangyayari sa kabilang bayan, ay siguro maririnig mo from very far. So, yun, narinig yun. No? Narinig yun ng mga kabitenyo. Okay, and they 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 mistook it, no? Napagkamalan nila na yun na yung hudiyat ng signal or to commence with the attack. Okay? 
Sabi niya, ah, ayan na, nagpapaputok na sa Manila, sumugod na tayo sa Arsenal. Mm. Okay. Pero hindi nila alam, it's just the, you know, fireworks doon sa kapistahan. So, 200 men, ito na ngayon, di ba? Yung nag-alsam, it was led by Sergeant La Madrid. Okay, take note of his name, no? Uh, they attacked Spanish officers at, at sight and seized the arsenal. Now, Izquierdo, upon learning the attack, ordered reinforcement of the Spanish forces in Cavite to quell the revolt. So, ito na nga iyon. So, medyo natunogan nila. Okay? Kaya napaghandaan. And at the same time, dahil nga hindi dumating ang mga manilenyo, naakala ng mga kabitenyo ay tutulungan sila. So, kaya sila natalo at naging unsuccessful ang mutiny na ito. All right. So, in result, the leaders of the plot were killed. The Gumbursa brothers were tried by a court martial and sentenced to be executed. So, at, at the same time, may mga ibang important personalities and figures ang nadawit at nadamay dito. Kasama na ang mga personalidad na nakikita nyo sa inyong screens. They were suspended from the practice of law, arrested, and sentenced to life imprisonment at Marianas Island. So, no, just a quick summary guys. No, there, we have the two versions. Ito yung dalawang mukha ng Cavite mutiny. Okay, so the Filipino version, no, it's just a simple mutiny. Inalisan nyo kami ng pribilehyo, Uh, inalasin nyo kami ng uh, exemption sa pagganyan, pagganyan. Siyempre, madidisatisfy kami, mag, mag aal sa kami. Okay, that's it. It's a mere mutiny. Pero sa Spanish version, no, they kind of magnified it. Pinalaki nila yan. So, according to them, it was the attempt of the Indios to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines. Okay, so you see the two, the two faces of the Cavite mutiny. Alright, so earlier on, di ba sabi ko kanina na related, no? Ang ang uh, Cavite mutiny sa Philippine Revolution. So this is how, this is how the revolution is related, no? To the Cavite mutiny. Because of the Cavite mutiny, the Gumburza fathers were tried, were sentenced to death. It was witnessed by Jose Rizal, who then wrote his novels no uh, attacking the abuse and then the injustice the injustice in the in the Philippine society during that time okay Sp specifically ang el filibusterismo no guys no take note tandaan niyo ang el filibusterismo ito ay idinedicate ni Jose Rizal sa Gumburza fathers okay so anong connect niya ngayon sir sa Philippine Revolution Mm, yeah, your guess is right, no? Nabasa 'yan ng napakaraming Pilipino, okay? At naimpluwensyahan 'yan. Nauimpluwensyahan ng mga sinulat ni Jose Rizal ang mga kaisipan ng Pilipino at isa na diyan ay si Sina. Yes, that's right. It's Andres Bonifacio. So Bonifacio also embraced somehow the ideals and the values of Jose Rizal and then he put it into action. No? He continued the Philippine Revolution which then resulted to the Philippine independence. All right? Ayun, di ba? Tapos na. Okay? Now guys, thank you so much for listening. If there's one key takeaway na medyo um, makukuha natin and one very important lesson is, you know, um, ipinamukha na no? sa mata ng mga Pilipino, sa mukha ng mga Pilipino, ang injustice. No? At yan ay nasaksihan ni Jose Rizal. You know what? He could have stayed silent. Hindi na siya nangialam. Which is pretty much many people think many people do nowadays, okay? But he, but uh, hindi niya hinaya ang manahimik, no? Uh, gumawa siya ng paraan para yun ay matuldukan na through his writing. So that's the lesson that we can take from the Cavite mutiny, okay? 
na kapag merong inaatraso or merong inaapakan or may isang issue na importante at talagang uh, uh, kailangan we should be very concerned, we should speak up. Okay? At kailangan natin mangialam at kailangan natin to raise our voice. Remember guys, no? Um, uh, the moment that you choose to be silent is the moment that you choose to be on the side of the oppressor. At yan ang uh, hin- uh, tinuldukan ni Dr. Jose Rizal, ang injustice sa Philippine society. All right. I hope you guys learned a thing or two for today. Thank you so much. Ayan, medyo naka nakarating ka sa dulo. All right. And I hope you you pass your recitation and yung pamodul ni Mami and Sir. So I hope to see you all again in my next YouTube video clip. Thank you so much. Have a great day and God bless everyone.